Hello and welcome to my first episode of the new series called 10 minute edit where I will take a raw file like this one right here and where I will turn it into the finished and fully edited picture at the end in just about 10 minutes while showing you every single step from start to finish. Alright, so as you can see here, this picture has a very soft lighting as well as color scheme and I still want to remain that mood at the end, but also make the picture a lot more contrasty and just make it pop. So what I'm going to do here is raise the shadows, bring down the highlights by quite a bit and also maybe even bring up the blacks and now we have a very washed out picture, but that is so I can bring the contrast more towards the right and as you can see the look is really very severe and it makes it look a lot more punchy and contrasty but by bringing up the shadows and blacks I still managed to do all of that without actually clipping or making any of the dark shadows too dark. So I'm just gonna fine tune the black slider at the end and I think that looks pretty good. And additionally to that I'm also gonna bring the clarity to the right to really make the picture pop and let's go to the color temperature. This is of course a very important thing and I don't want to make this whole picture very warm in itself so I'm gonna go for a relatively neutral look at the start. And then I'm gonna go down straight away into the split toning so I can click on this little box and just add a little bit of warm tones over the highlights. And what this will do is add a lot more warm tones over the highlight areas than the shadows, which results in a lot more differentiation than when I would just go into the warm tones here in the temperature slider. And I think I'm gonna bring up the whites a little bit just to make the picture pop even more. And let's see, maybe I'm even gonna add some saturation. Yeah, really not that much, just a little bit. And I really like the look in the foreground. But for this guy, I'm gonna have to grab a graduated filter and just go a little bit into the minus saturation just to equivalent out the sky. And I really like that look. Then let's see with the tonal curve, I'm gonna bring up the highlights a little bit and just play around with the rest of these sliders. I don't think there's really too much to be done. Maybe bring down the shadows a little bit. Then HSL, I really wanna bring up the luminance within the greens and also bring up the saturation within the greens and while I'm at it maybe I'm even gonna change the hue of the greens themselves and just make them a little bit more distinctively green. Then let's go down to split toning I've already done. Detail is something that I usually do a lot more carefully but here I'm just gonna add quite a bit of sharpening, bring the mask into the right while holding down the Alt or CMD key if you're on a Mac and want to make sure that I don't select anything that doesn't have any texture. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to bring the color slide to the right. And this picture was actually shot at ISO 6400 and by bringing up the shadows and everything, there is quite a lot of noise in this photo. But at the same time, I don't think really that there's too much noise reduction needed, maybe just a hint. I really don't like noise reduction very much as it adds a lot more plasticky look to the picture and decreases the sharpness by a lot. Then quickly in the lens corrections, remove chromatic aberration as well, choose my lens for profile correction and that will get rid of the distortion as well as the vignetting. Distortion is definitely a great thing but I think vignetting, I'm gonna bring that down because I really like how it looks right now. So then transform, don't really think I need to do anything, but a thing that I just noticed is that the picture is not straight, so I'm just gonna go into the crop tool and make my horizon and my whole picture as straight as it can, and that definitely looks a lot better. Then effects, here you could add additional vignetting, but I really don't think this picture is really made for that. So let's go down here and see actually the hay slider. A thing that I actually found out is that the clarity slider adds a lot more of a kind of dehazish look than the dehay slider itself. So I always like to prefer the clarity over the dehaze, but sometimes it is still worth to go a little bit into the plus with that slider at the end. 
Alright, so I think we're pretty much done with the global adjustments. Yes, there are some other global adjustments that you could adjust, but this is a 10 minute edit, so I'm trying to make this very concise. So let's go into the local adjustments instead, and in terms of the graduated filters, I don't really think I have to add any here, except for the one with minus saturation that I've added at the start. So let's actually go straight away into the dodge and burning and dodge and burning is of course making individual parts of your picture either darker or brighter and that is a great way to create dynamic and additional interest in your lighting scheme. I'm not going to cover dodge and burning very in depth here but rather do it relatively quickly because once again 10 minute edit and I've made plenty of dodge and burning tutorials previously but I'm just gonna mix that with a little bit of color, perhaps a little bit more towards the yellowish tones and just a little bit of saturation. And then of course add plus exposure with various amounts of exposure and whites over the entire image. And for example here, I think that could work pretty well. And just right click duplicate, bring it over another spot and depending on the location, you could even add contrast or maybe even clarity. And you always want to make sure that you make it look natural and adjust all of these sliders respectively because every area needs maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. It really depends. So it is always worth to really play around with these sliders to at the end get the most natural and the most pleasing look um, that you can. So I'm gonna do this relatively quick here, so just another one over there. Maybe make this entire this entire side a little bit brighter and maybe even mix that with a bit of a bit of warm tones. And once again, just fine adjust everything so it looks natural at the end. And let's see here, maybe I'm gonna take this one, right click duplicate and just drag it over another spot. And maybe I'm just gonna add a few without any color at all, but instead with a little bit more whites as well as exposure. And yeah, maybe a little bit of contrast still. And you know, there's really a lot to be done with Dutch Burning. You could go way more into detail and into depth than I do in this picture right here. But just as a general rule, I think I can show you the whole Dutch and Burning stage pretty well here. So once again, just another few filters. I hope this doesn't lag too much for you, but um, it looks pretty good actually. And yeah, another one over there. So let me think. In terms of dodge and burning, I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna real quick adjust these sliders of this one filter and make it look natural at the end because sometimes it can really happen that you add too much of a certain slider and then of course you just want to go back and adjust the respective adjustment. So then let's see, I don't think there's really too much to be done other than that. Maybe I am actually going to go into the graduated filters and for once bring down the saturation in the sky even more and then just add a filter with a very soft edge over one side and just add a little bit of plus exposure and then add another one over another side or pretty much in parallel over the other side of the picture and just go a little bit into the minus exposure and that will create differentiation from one side to another. It's a very, uh, a very simple, a very subtle adjustment but it does overall help and once again this is a 10 minute edit so I'm not gonna have too much time to go in depth and in detail with every single tool but by the way here's before any dodge and burning and here's after I think it did a pretty good job despite the very uh, fast pace that we're working on here but I'm gonna say that I'm done here with this picture so let's see where we started at with the raw file and it's a pretty big difference actually from start to finish. I like it a lot more, it's a lot more contrasty, a lot more vibrant and even though I might have to add a little bit more dodge and burning at the end to really make it look even in a sense and so there's not really too much plus exposure in, in a certain area but I think for the overall editing and the whole style I'm really a fan of that and by the way I might even add a little bit more 
saturation with more green tones over these trees right here just so the trees themselves are a little bit more pronounced and I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the trees over here and just fine tune all of these adjustments. And of course this is also the first episode of a new format and please let me know what you think of this general format of editing a picture from start to finish in 10 minutes. It is, I think, personally a really nice addition to the longer and more in-depth tutorials, which I will of course keep on making regardless. Your feedback is definitely greatly appreciated, so if you could leave me a comment with your general thoughts of this format or just like or dislike the video itself would be really helpful as well. It will really help me to see which kind of videos and formats and stuff like that I should do in the future and of course if I should keep on making these 10 minute edits. So despite this video being a little bit longer than 10 minutes, I hope you still enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Until then, of course as always, keep on editing great pictures.